2022, the year of Ethereum. Welcome into the crypto bunker as we're going to talk about Ethereum and the reason why I believe 2022 is the biggest year for Ethereum in its history. If you'd like the way that sounds, hit the like button and let's get into it. Ethereum has gone through seven plus years now of proof of work. And in 2022, we are moving to proof of stake. Not only that, but we're seeing mass adoption of NFTs, layer two scaling solutions coming online and much more. And really Ethereum being burned out of existence that we didn't even expect. What does it all mean? Let's get into it. First, let's talk about how far Ethereum has come in 2021. We first had the Beacon Chain released over a year ago now. This is a separate chain from Ethereum, which began the process of being able to stake your Ethereum. This allows users who trust that Ethereum mainnet will eventually move over to the Beacon Chain fully, the chance to lock up their coins for a 6% interest return uh, that's paid in, in Ethereum. Once Ethereum moves fully to proof of stake around June of this year, uh, well, I don't wanna give an exact date, but Q1 or Q2 of this year, we will see those coins unlock and people will be able to stake and unstake freely. We also saw the implementation of EIP-1559 um, in August of 2021, which feels like a year ago at this point. Um, but you know, as we take a look at how that impacted things, <clears throat> we can see that we have burned 1.3 million ETH out of existence. Uh, we've been burning about 6.15 ETH per minute. We see that NFTs and OpenSea is really the uh, one of the main drivers of, of burning ETH, as well as ETH transfers. Um, you know, this is like when Coinbase moves your Ethereum to your Ethereum wallet or, or things like that. Um, just people transferring their tokens uh, and the gas fees that accrue to that. And um, we see that obviously Uniswap as well with the swapping feature. And we can also see that once the merge goes into place, we will have an estimation of about negative 2.3 percent uh, issuance for Ethereum. And we saw miners in this uh, process receive 70% less Ethereum to then dump on the market because that 70% is now being burned out of existence with every transaction fee. So when people use Ethereum, I, as an Ethereum holder, am getting paid. This is equivalent to a large scale share buyback in a stock. As Ethereum is burned, it becomes more scarce and therefore as a holder, more value is accrued to me. Next, we had NFTs. Uh, we had NFTs explode in 2021. CryptoPunks followed by Board Ape Yacht Club. We had Cool Cats, Crypto Toads, Cyber Kongs, Atom Bomb Squad, Stoner Cats, Onchain Monkey, Smiles VRs, Dead Fellas, Women and Weapons, so many, Art Blocks, Fidenzas. All these NFTs priced in Ethereum. All these NFTs that, that we're going through priced in Ethereum. So this has really brought, to, brought users into the Ethereum ecosystem and has continued to do so. And many celebrities have taken the plunge into NFTs. Um, and you know we're seeing just this Ethereum ecosystem sort of um, really take off through NFTs. We have celebrities such as Shaq, Steph Curry, Dennis Rodman, Jimmy Fallon, Eminem, Timberland, uh, J, you know, Jay-Z, Dave, Dave Chappelle recently just to name a few. Um, they're basically all in now. And the culture that NFTs has created has really swept through locker rooms and swept through the country in general. And I believe that this is bullish for Ethereum. Ethereum is now used to buy art at a worldwide auctions like Christie's and Sotheby's and is listed next to other world currencies. Okay, so when we tried to buy the constitution, um, you know, you saw that uh, you know, it was priced for us, it was priced in Ethereum and we were offering Ethereum while other people were offering USD, you know, um, the yen, the, you know, the different pounds, um, different currencies across the world. And, you know, ETH is now culture money in this sense. Um, another thing that we had was, um, was DeFi, right? And um, DeFi on Ethereum has gone exponential. Um, we're now sitting at $155 billion locked. And um, this is just on Ethereum mainnet. This isn't counting um, 
This isn't counting, you know, Polygon, which also kind of um, uses Ethereum as a security layer. It's not counting Arbitrum or different layer twos that we'll get into in a minute. Um, DeFi on Ethereum has just grown significantly over the past year and a half. And there, you know, uh, this is led by Curve, as we can see, Convex, MakerDAO, wrapped Bitcoin. There's actually 1.4% of all of the Bitcoin in, in existence has been wrapped and is locked away uh, in wrapped Bitcoin on the Ethereum mainnet. So if you want to be a Bitcoin maximalist, you have to understand that, you know, this is a this is a large amount of Bitcoin that's locked in Ethereum. And so, you know, we're, we're these are interoperable product protocols and it's time to end the maximalism uh, of chains. And as you can see, you know, going down the line, we have Compound, Ave, Uniswap, and, and many more here. Um, <clears throat> then we have other, you know, layer twos solutions that are being built on Ethereum. Uh, things like ZK Sync, Arbitrum, Optimism, Starkware. All these layer two solutions are built using Ethereum. So they take on similar security guarantees while also providing lower transaction fees and faster transactions. Um, you know, so, you know, if we look at Arbitrum.io, um, um, for me, it, I use Arbitrum and, um, you know, it's, it's very easy process. You just go to your MetaMask wallet and you would, um, you would just bridge over. So you can say, you can see it says bridge into Arbitrum. Obviously, um, you need to connect your wallet and all that. Um, and so, uh, you know, it makes, but that makes it easy uh, for, for you. And it's really, it's really right now, it's a good time. It's only maybe like $25 uh, to, to bridge over. And then you can use Sushi or Uniswap now um, or different, you know, apps like Abracadabra Money to sort of play around. Um, you could uh, move your Ethereum to Abracadabra.money on Arbitrum. And then you could take a loan out in um, the the uh, stablecoin Magic Internet Money, which is MIM, and then you could uh, farm with those tokens uh, using the Curve LP uh, pool on um, on Curve Arbitrum. And uh, you know it sounds a little crazy, but then you can stake it on Money, and you can earn twenty percent interest paid in spell. And the reason that I use Arbitrum is because I, um, I want to farm the Arbitrum token as well that possibly will come out. And so uh, once we do get layer two solution tokens, which I think will happen in 2022, I think that that will attract many more users to these um, layer two solutions. And that will inherit inherently um, you know, lead back to more Ethereum adoption because um, these these uh, layer two solutions have to then settle back their transactions to Ethereum. And so that costs them money, which uh, costs gas fees, which then burns that Ethereum uh, through you know the EIP1559. So the Ethereum ecosystem is a is a living machine. You know, it's it's a Ethereum has a soul in itself. And so, you know, so not all of these projects, in my opinion, have have that. Um, you know, we see Starkware coming online. We see DYDX, Immutable X, different um, applications so rare that are that are using uh, Starkware, and Starkware relies on Ethereum to um, for its uh, for its um, you know settling back to the most secure network that they that they have. And we see Mastercard and Visa building on Layer Twos. Um, you know, it's crazy. We you know we're seeing uh, them use consensus to then build. Uh, Z, possibly ZK rollups. Um, you know, this is probably farther in the future, um, but you know, we will see. Um, you know where that goes, um, and these these layer twos have higher security guarantees than alternate layer ones like Solana and Avalanche, while also providing fast transaction fees. Um, and so, finally, uh, you know, we can see that Ethereum uh, has many many different. Uh, aspects to you know the, what's going to happen with Ethereum 2.0. This is the most ambitious action a blockchain has ever taken, and the merge will most likely go through in Q1 or Q2 of 2022. This will bring staking to the masses, will reduce carbon emissions of Ethereum by 99.9%. It will also complete the triple halving, which is the Ethereum supply crunch equivalent to three Bitcoin halvings. Uh, we will then have a negative two or more percent issuance rate on Ethereum, the asset, meaning it will become more scarce by 2% every year until the price rises largely enough 
uh, to create inflationary Ethereum issuance again, which I think will happen. Uh, so you will be able to really earn a risk-free rate of 6 to 10% paid in Ethereum, compounding most likely every week on a deflationary asset. And all of those factors are why this is Ethereum's coming out party. 2022 is the year of Ethereum. Well, let's get into the charts. Um, we are starting to pump a little bit here. Uh, we did get you know a little bit rejected, I guess, uh, in the last couple of minutes. Um, but what I'm seeing is, is again, just this, this wedge that's forming uh, for Ethereum and, um, you know, and is sort of what we're seeing is, uh, you know, the potential of a, of a squeeze here um, that we're seeing. And we're sort of breaking free of that a little bit right now, in my opinion. Um, and so, you know, what I believe the next run to possibly be would be around to like 4,500. Obviously none of this, what I say is financial advice um, on any of my videos, you know, or, or this one, but, um, you know, we're seeing this sort of wedge formation for Ethereum. And I really think that we sort of are, you know, done potentially with this bottoming out process. I think January will be a big month. Um, you know, looking at the bigger picture, we are sort of still in this, obviously, in this wedge um, that we're forming, this this larger um, ascending wedge that we're forming uh, for Ethereum. And, um, you know, it's it's something that I think we could be stuck in for a little bit longer, to be honest. Um, I don't expect us to really break free of this wedge uh, for, you know, maybe until even the end of next year, to be honest. like. Um, you know, we could sort of just bounce around um, in these different, in this, in this sort of way here, uh, where we just, we don't really, we just bounce around until we finally break free. Um, and I think that when we do break free, I, I'm looking at, again, I mean, I'm looking towards $20,000 um, Ethereum, at, you know, in a, in a major blow off top, maybe 30000 to to 50000 by the end of next year, I, uh, that's obviously it sounds crazy, you know, uh, but I'm predicting somewhere around a, a, a thousand percent gain for Ethereum this year. I think that, again, like we just have so many of these factors that are coming into play for Ethereum that I think um, will take hold. And we also want to look at the ETH to Bitcoin ratio where we see we uh, we came up and then we we sort of um, we had we didn't really we weren't able to test this fully. So it is possible that we come down and and fully test this. I'm not sure though. I don't, I don't think we will. Um, but if we're just sort of looking at this on a, uh, a weekly time frame, um, we see that, you know, Ethereum, uh, you know, has, has been bought here, bought the people bought the, uh, the ETH Bitcoin ratio dip here. As you can see, this is probably the end of the correction because we're forming a dragonfly, uh, doji here. And that's a, that's a major bullish signal. Um, and you know you can see the dip has been bought, and um, so I think next stop is around 0.1 uh, for the ETH Bitcoin ratio. And and I do believe that in 2022 that Ethereum will flip Bitcoin in market cap, uh, which will mean that it outperforms it, uh, as we can see by double um, the the price. And so um, if you look at the market cap here, uh, yeah, of you know probably double. Um, so yeah, this looks good. Above 3,800 is where I would like to see the daily close um, for today. And, and I think that we will. I think, um, you know, traditional, you know, during this correction, um, you know, I've, I've emphasized four different points and I can go back um, and just kind of go over those with you guys. But, um, you know, I, I emphasize four different points. And if I can even go back, I know I been tweeting a lot um, lately, and so I might not even be able to find the um, the four different factors that I believe. But you know, one of them was the options expiry um, on December thirty first, and so that's out of the way now. Um, you know, I think you know um, one of the other ones was just hedge funds who are who are selling, um, who then you know. Um, who didn't basically want, they were taking tax losses. Um, people were taking tax losses. Um, and so I apologize for, you know, I could probably just go through these without even having these, uh, having to look back at all these tweets and 
I'm probably making you dizzy at this point. Um, but anyway, yeah, I think um, one of them was tax loss selling. So people who bought above these levels who were just like, okay, I'm going to take, take the tax loss. I'm going to jump right back in in the beginning of January. We had the biggest option expiry of all time, which means that people were betting um, that by year end, these assets would be a certain price. And so the max pain for those people were to get washed out of those uh, leveraged positions. Um, we also had China who was banning uh, the use of derivatives on exchanges. Uh, centralized exchanges. So a lot of people were kicked out of those. And so there was a lot of unwinding uh, from Chinese sellers uh, as well. Um, and that, that I think expired as well on December 31st. Um, we also had hedge funds who didn't want to list uh, crypto on their end of year uh, balance sheets, um, just because they didn't want to have to explain it. And then they probably will jump right back in. Um, and so there was a lot of different uh, factors that I think played into this sell-off. And so there's no reason to be worried. Um, and, you know, hopefully you guys got something out of this video and, uh, you know, comment below with, uh, with your thoughts on Ethereum this year, maybe uh, some of your top picks for this year, if you want to, uh, that would really help the algorithm uh, and as well as liking the video and subscribing if you haven't. So hopefully you guys have a great uh, 2022 um, and, you know, let's get ready for, for great things for Ethereum here um, and have a great day.